Good afternoon. First, I would like to thank everybody who was involved in making this exceptional meeting possible. So I'll be talking today about the innovative chromatin regulators in avoiding transcription-induced replication stress. And the first story that I hope to tell you is about the role of innovative chromatin remodeler in maintaining cancer cell proliferation by resolving car loops. This was a collaboration between my laboratory and that of Dr. Man Manolis Papamikos Hronakis. And also many other people contributed greatly to this, so I would like to uh, acknowledge all of them with this slide. So during case phase, the cell has to synthesize a tremendous amount of DNA despite multiple factors that try to stop replication forks. And of course, one of these factors is transcription and uh, specifically R loops, which are co-transcription of structures shown time and again to be uh, blocked to uh, DNA replication. So R loops are basically three-stranded structures in which the nascent RNA strand hybridizes with the template DNA. They tend to form in regions of, uh, that are negatively supercoiled, have high uh, CG content, at NICs, and uh, they have been shown to be important regulators of gene expression as well as uh, repair. But when left unchecked, they are serious uh, threat to genomic stability. And they're usually controlled by various enzymes that uh, degrade or unwind them, as well as by inhibiting replication or transcription. And the new AT chromatin remodeler is a multi subunit uh, ATP dependent complex that is involved in basically everything in the nucleus, in repair and transcription or regulation, genome segregation, and many other uh, things. But uh, what we're interested really is, is its role in replication. It, it has been known since maybe the beginning of the century that uh, East strength lacking subunits of the remodeler are hypersensitive to DNA damage induced by, that induces uh, lesions that store replication forks. Inuit also maps to origins of replication and forks both in yeast and mammalian cells tend to progress more slowly when uh, Inuit is missing. Also following replication stress, uh, forks fail to, to resume when Inuit is absent. So yesterday, Philippe Passer introduced the uh, DNA fiber labeling, what you, but I will just briefly uh, reiterate for those that are not accustomed to seeing this kind of images that uh, these images are basically nascent DNA stretched on a glass surface that has been sourced from cells labeled for fixed amount of time with halogenated nucleotides, which allows their immunostaining. And since uh, labeling is done for a fixed amount of time, the length of the fiber is, uh, uh, this goes along, is proportionate to the speed of the replication fork. So on this slide you see uh, DNA fibers in cells silenced for in 80 with and without overexpression of uh, siRNA immune form of in 80 at the time when we started this project, Manolis was working on a mechanism for ex extraction of uh, terminally stored RNA polymerase II from chromatin by in So we decided to check if uh, transcription, since we didn't know why, what caused the replication defect of uh, in ino 80 depleted cells, we decided to try if transcription or inhibition would rescue the replication defect in these cells. So we used uh, different uh, inhibitors and uh, indeed we saw that uh, there was a partial reversal of uh, the length of the fibers upon treatment with transcriptional inhibitors. So next we checked whether overexpression of uh, RNA-SH1 would reverse the effect since uh, we assumed that ROPs might be the cause of replication for stores and indeed we observed a partial rescue of the replication defect in innately depleted cells. RNA overexpression was also able to rescue the replication defect in cells that were silenced for another subunit of the remodeler, as well as to 
abolish the partial S phase block observed in inuit depleted cells. So next we treated uh, inuit de deficient cells with the uh, HDAC inhibitor Vorinus Taut, and we observed that it also rescued the replication defect. However, uh, when combined with RNAs H1 treatment, the effects did not add up, which suggests that inuit counter uh, chromatin regulation by inuit counteracts our loops to promote fork progression. And next, we uh, checked the symmetry of the forks when replication forks start from the same origin of replication, they proceed in both directions with more or less the same speed, which results in a structures that are symmetrical. Uh, this was not the case in case in cells deficient for NAT, where the, the sister forks were more than two times different. But overexpression of RNA H1 rescued this defect. Uh, gamma H2X is a histone mark that is associated with DNA damage and replication stress, so it's uh, natural that uh, united deficient cells accumulate uh, gamma H2X in a S phase specific manner. And overexpression of RNA H1 again rescued the accumulation of this. This also happened when uh, we used transcription or inhibition, the, the accumulation of gamma H2X was reversed. And next we uh, checked the amount of r loops by uh, immunofluorescence with uh, S9.6 antibody. And we observed that independent of uh, whether the cells were in or outside of uh, the S phase, there was an increase of uh, S9.6 signal in cells deficient for innovating. Next, we checked whether the increase of R loops is site specific. And we found by uh, uh, DNA RNA immunoprecipitation followed by PCR that uh, uh, sequences known to, to be prone to R loop formation are indeed generate uh, more R loops in cells uh, silenced for NOAT, while other sequences did not. So, this uh, phenomenon is uh, site specific. Next, we analyzed the association of NOAT and tar hoops by state microscopy, and we observed that about uh, 25 to 50 percent of the uh, R-loop fossa associated with NOAT. This was done by modeling the fossa, and uh, then we, we find out that the fossa that the r fossa that had some overlap with in 80 fossa were bigger and brighter than the ones that uh, did not overlap. So using published uh, ChIP-seq and uh, drip -seq data, we found that uh, r loops and uh, in 80 coenriching uh, gene bodies. And then using uh, from HMM modeling to, to segment the genome into 20 states based on several histone marks and uh, inuit and uh, several uh, DNA modifications, we found that uh, inuit accumulates in uh, states 10 and uh, 15, state 10 being uh, showing characteristics of active promoters and state 15 being uh, defined by inuit itself. Also, state 15 was the place where our loops alone and uh, in association of NOAT were most enriched, suggesting that NOAT and uh, our loops associate even outside of gene bodies. So next we uh, did uh, salt fractionation of cells uh, with and without overexpression of RNA H1, and we observed that upon overexpression of RNA H1, there is an increase in the high salt fraction of inuit in the high salt fraction and decrease in the chromatin bound fraction, which suggests that uh, our loops stabilize inuit and chromatin. So next we decided to, to see what happens if you tether inuit to, to chromatin using a cell line with an integrated array of black hole uh, sites. We observed that by, by immunofluorescence that uh, the array was a, a site of uh, our loop formation, but uh, the S9.6 signal was reduced upon tethering there of uh, RNA-SH1 or in 80. 
And then we used a variation of the system in which, uh, for live cell imaging, in which we did, a, we used a fusion construct of RNA binding domain of uh, RNA SH1 fused to DS red. This is something that we kept copied from a paper of uh, Andres Aguilera. And we observed that uh, the same, that the array in live cells accumulated uh, uh, RBDDS red signal. So we employed the system to follow the dynamics of uh, our formation at the array. Uh, we did time-lapse microscopy and calculated the full change of uh, intensity of the sensor by comparing the, the intensity at each time point with the preceding one, and uh, express this uh, in logarithmic manner. So uh, in this uh, type of a representation, positive values correspond to net formation of our loops, while negative ones correspond to their decrease. Uh, in both cases, whether you know it was steady there or not, there was a positive uh, four change uh, values which indicate formation in all cases at the array. And uh, suggesting, but, but the, uh, the, le the mean value of uh, the uh, four change of, uh, even of, of uh, fluorescence of the sensor was lower when you know it was tethered, suggesting that. Uh, the remodel suppressed formation of our loops. So we used this to, to try to distinguish whether this is due to uh, our loop resolution or just suppression of our loop formation there. So we assumed that uh, you know, it was not uh, involved in our loop resolution. In that case, you need to have the same amount of resolution applied in both cases. And uh, since we need to drive the mean value lower in the case when the remodel was uh, tethered there, we need to have a greater amount of negative values in the, uh, this segmented part of the graph, but it was not the case, which suggests that the initial assumption that uh, NIT is not involved in our loop resolution is not true, suggesting that probably this is due to active resolution of our loops by the remodeler. So we ne next uh, tested whether our loop resolution by in is important for cancer cell proliferation. This was done by comparing the effect of uh, uh, RNA SH1 over expression and uh, SI and uh, silencing of in And uh, while we did not observe effects in, in uh, HEC cells, HEC embryonic kidney cells. In cancer cell lines, we observed that uh, both treatments, um, RNA SH1 overexpression and silencing of in led to a decrease in cell growth. However, when combined, RNA SH1 overexpression uh, increased growth rates in cells silenced for in and this was several fold higher than uh, the expected value if the two uh, factors were unrelated, suggesting that uh, resolution of our loops by in is uh, necessary for cancer cell proliferation. So this is the thing that uh, our conclusions. And in the next two or three minutes, I'll try to tell you another short story, uh, just as an example of uh, another type of uh, replication transcription interference by uh, RFBL1. RFBL1 is uh, stoichiometrically the most abundant uh, protein in the NAT type uh, chromatin complexes. It's in six times excess than everything else, forming a dodecameric module that uh, with a very similar RFBL2 protein. And it is uh, very often overexpressed in cancer. So I wanted to mimic this situation and overexpress the RFBO1, both uh, uh, the wild type and the ATPase uh, deficient uh, variant. And in both cases, we observed all the characteristics of uh, replication stress, shorter uh, 
replication tracts, accumulation of gamma H2X, and uh, this was, uh, the effects were reversed by transcriptional inhibition. So we uh, reasoned that since uh, RAFBL1 and uh, CMIC are known to associate, we uh, analyzed uh, published data and found that on, in this case, uh, mouse chromosome 15, 64% of CMIC uh, peaks overlap with RAFBL1. And the majority of these overlapping peaks are uh, fairly close to the transcription start sites. So this suggests that probably the CMIC RAFBL1 interaction is important. So we uh, made a, a variant of RAFBL1 that was uh, deleted at its end terminus to, to remove the interaction domain with CMIC. And to observe that it lost the ability to, to induce uh, replication stress when overexpressed. And also when we checked the serin 2 phosphorylation of RPB1 CTD, uh, unlike the full length uh, variants of the protein, it was not able to increase the amount of, uh, of uh, actively elongating uh, polymerases in, uh, that are. To, to which this uh, modification is specific. So next we did uh, proximity ligation assay to see whether RFBO overexpression would bring together uh, CMIC and RPB1, and we observed that indeed the full length uh, wild type protein induced uh, much more uh, PLA foci, which was not the case when we used the uh, mutant deficient for the interaction with CMIC. And the next uh, image is uh, to show that RFBL1 and uh, overexpression, the protein goes to, to RPB1, that it happens at transcription complexes. So, so what we think happens is that uh, overexpression of RFBL1 causes an increased amount of CMIC to, to go to RNA POTUS, and this in turn brings uh, TF. Uh, B factor CDK9 cycling T1 that uh, leads to, to, an increase, uh, to, incre to, to an increase in the amount of uh, actively elongating uh, RNA POTUS. And this increases in turn the, the, the chances for uh, interference with replication. So, with this, I would like to acknowledge everybody that was. Uh, linked to this kind of studies and also our funding source. And thank you for your attention. I'll take your questions if any. Hi, nice talk. I have a, a couple of questions. Okay. When, when you see the coincidence with, between the, the I-80 and, and the, and the R-loops, do you know whether there is any impact on transcription on those sites because it might be since I know it is a, a uh, chromatin remo remodeler. Yes. You're going to have an impact. Then that might also explain. I do realize that you uh, propose that is resolution, but I was wondering whether you have any idea about this, whether it might be something related to transcription itself. To, to transcription, well, uh, silencing of you know, it did not change the overall rate of transcription uh, when we used uh, etinuridine incorporation as a readout. So we don't think this is uh, due to some changes of yeah. okay. overall changes. I was changes wondering at specific sites. At specific sites, we didn't yeah. look, no. Then, if you consider that this promoting resolution, you know, I know it doesn't have a, uh, a priority yeah, and activity, uh, what do you think is bringing or favoring the accumulation at particularly Helicase, RNA sage, because uh, yeah. who does the okay, job? Okay, yeah, I see. I think, well, this is extremely uh, preliminary, but uh, my feeling is that in AT brings FANCHEM, which has been shown to resolve our loops in vitro, and also there's some in vivo work, maybe from 2015. So on this slide, I have shown the uh, Co-enrichment of uh, Inuit and FANCHEM at which is quite high, the correlation co coefficient is quite high at promoters and at gene bodies, and not outside of genes. And also we did some immunoprecipitation showing that Inuit and FANCHEM uh, 
interact. And uh, when we did uh, fiber labeling, combining silencing of funk M and TNA together, we didn't see an additional effect to the, to the single uh, knockdown, suggesting that probably they both act on the same pathway. And then we see by FRAP some change in the profiles of recovery, but I wouldn't bet on that because we're still trying to do this. Yeah, so it might happen because we have a, in, in other type of chromatin remodelers, that what you are observing at sites where replication gets tall and there you need Fanconi anemia. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not that clear that Fan M directly resolves Arlo by itself, but what uh -huh. you are happening is you are finding this coincidence uh -huh. because the, the Arlo is blocking the fork and I know anything, let's say, as wise Nif and all that, is helping Fanconi to resolve the the block fork in their loop, and as a consequence, you are also reducing their loops. Then mm -hmm. this might be related mm -hmm. with replication yeah. for this is something that you might. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's uh, very yeah. interesting, yeah. So, uh, just a quick, I, I, haven't, I, I haven't thought about this at all. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the, I would assume that the re resolution of topological, um, I mean, with the R loops, you would think, you know, like the topology is really, you know, very, you know, different as, as these things are yeah. going. Have you, mo can you modulate topoisomerase and, and see sure. what happens? Sure, you increase our loops tremendously. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, if not, let's thank our speaker. Okay.